The purpose of this film is to illustrate the need for individual care and preventive maintenance by the projectionist on the AQ-2A1 projector. You will notice the operator has to hand wind the take-up reel due to a broken take-up felt. To avoid interrupting the continuity of the film being shown, the projectionist had to improvise. In any emergency, the operator must remain calm and do the best he can under the circumstances. minor repairs and replacements should be accomplished at the first opportunity. As in this instance, the projectionist is replacing the take-up belt with a new one as soon as the film was finished. A minor situation could happen any time. Therefore, to minimize such occurrences, a system of inspections has been set up. This enables the operator to become more familiar with this equipment and to be aware of the condition of his projector. In his daily and periodic inspections, the projectionist includes any preventive maintenance necessary, such as oiling, cleaning, and replacement of parts. Internal lubrication for the AQ-2A1 projector is supplied through a one-point feed lubrication system. Oil is applied to the central oil well cup located on top of the projector case. All projectors should be lubricated only with oil bearing military symbol 2135H and this should be used sparingly. It is a good idea to follow the same path as the film takes in your step-by-step -step inspection and preventive maintenance procedures. Start with the rewind belt and pulley. Make sure the belt is in good condition and the pulleys have the proper tension. Each film roller guide should be rotated and all dirt, lint, and film emulsion removed with an aperture brush. If necessary, use a clean soft cloth moistened with pure grain alcohol to soften the dirt and emulsion. All guide rollers on the AQ-2A1 projector should be lubricated with 2135H oil every 100 hours of operation or every 60 days. Film guide roller shafts are oiled every 250 hours. Clean the sprockets and shoes with the aperture brush moistened with pure grain alcohol. To facilitate the cleaning, open the film shoes and run the projector. Be sure to remove all traces of dirt and emulsion. Stop the projector and thoroughly clean the film shoes. The film shoes must be perfectly clean, otherwise the film may be damaged. To clean the pressure and aperture plates, remove the pressure plate from the machine. Caution, never attempt to remove this plate while the projector is running. Soften the dirt with alcohol, then remove caked emulsion with a smooth, soft stick. Be sure to clean all dirt from the rectangular opening in the pressure plate. While the pressure plate is out, remove and clean the aperture plate. To remove, Grasp the thumb handle at the top of the assembly and pull up, then outward. With the aperture brush or moistened soft cloth, remove all traces of dirt and caked emulsion from the entire film contacting surface. Be sure to clean accumulated dirt from the edges of the aperture plate. When reinstalling the aperture plate, place the retaining slots of the plate over the guides on the mounting brackets, then push the plate downward as far as it will go. 
Next, insert the pressure plate back into its proper position. When installing this plate, the clips should seat properly on the flanges. Then push the plate in all the way. Next, make sure the projection lens is clean and free of all fingerprints. Remember, fingerprints should be removed at once, otherwise they may become permanently etched in the lens. To inspect the projection lamp and reflector, swing open and lift off the housing door to reach the lamp. Remove the lamp from its socket. Use a soft cloth when there is danger of the bulb being hot. Clean with a clean, soft, lint-free cloth or lens tissue. Then examine the filaments and glass to make sure they are free of defects. If any flaw is detected, replace the element with a new one. While the projection lamp is out of its socket, clean the lamp reflector and condenser lens with lens tissue. When installing the projection lamp, Line up the flanges on the base of the lamp with the slots in the lamp socket. Then press down firmly and turn in a clockwise direction until it locks in place. Wipe the lamp with the lens tissue to remove the fingerprints. After installing the lamp, Project the light on the screen and focus the image of the aperture. Should the light be uneven, adjust the position of the lamp with the adjustment levers. The right lever moves the lamp socket in and out, while the left one moves the socket backward and forward. Remember, if adjustment does not produce a uniform brilliance on the screen, the lamp is unsatisfactory and should immediately be replaced with a new one. Careful preventive maintenance in this area can greatly reduce film damage and replacement costs. Make sure all sprockets, sprocket shoes and rollers are cleaned and free of residue. The sound drum must be handled very carefully because the bearings are delicate. Any damage to them will result in excessive sound flutter. While rotating the drum, remove all dirt and lint from its surface with a clean, soft, lint-free cloth. To check the exciter lamp, First, make certain the power to the projector has been disconnected, then remove the cover by turning the thumb screw counterclockwise until the cover can be lifted from the projector. Then move the exciter lamp release and locking ring to its right-hand position to release the registration pins and permit the lamp to be lifted out. Clean the lamp with lens tissue and inspect the filaments and glass. If a flaw is detected, replace with a new lamp. To clean the exciter lamp lens, blow air across the surface, then polish with the lens tissue. Never attempt to take any lens out of its housing. This should be done by qualified technicians only using precision instruments. When installing the exciter lamp, place the lamp base openings over the appropriate registration pins and turn the locking ring to the extreme left. Wipe all fingerprints from the lamp and replace the cover. All projectionists should be able to ascertain the probable causes of operational deficiencies or breakdowns when they occur. Some of the more frequent occurrences and possible remedies are motor operates but projection lamp does not light. This may be caused by motor lamp switch not turned to lamp position, projection lamp not seated correctly in socket causing poor contact, or the projection lamp is burned out. Picture not sharp on screen. One side or entire picture may be fuzzy. This could be due to improperly focused, dirty, oily, finger spotted, or defective projection lens, insufficient pressure plate tension, or pressure plate not seating firmly against film in aperture channel, film loops too short, or it could be bad film. Picture is satisfactory, but there is no sound. Possible remedies are turn on amplifier switch, set loudspeaker selector switch in correct position, make sure loudspeaker cable is properly connected, or replace burnt out exciter lamp. Inadequate sound volume or distorted reproduction due to volume control not turned up sufficiently, 
Dirt or oil partly obstructing sound optical system. Dirty or defective exciter lamp. Bad soundtrack or worn film sprocket holes. If the projector fails to take up film properly, the trouble may be belt is off the ratchet pulley in projector or off pulley on take up arm, a bent or stretched take up belt. The film may not be attached to the hub of take up reel. The take up reel is bent or jammed on arm or is slipping on the spindle or the lock nuts on the take-up arm are too tight or too loose. When the projector fails to rewind film properly, the trouble may be bent or stretched rewind belt or belt off pulleys, or lock nuts on reel arm too tight or too loose, or the plunger may be set in the improper position. If the projector does not function at all, it may be faulty electrical wiring, or a blown fuse. To check, unplug the projector, then remove the fuse from the receptacle and examine. If found defective, replace with new 15 amp 250 volt fuse. No special tools or equipment items are required for the preventive maintenance services delegated to the projectionist and the items which are necessary for on the spot replacements are kept in the projector case door. If trouble occurs other than that which can be remedied immediately, send the equipment through authorized channels for repair. Additional information on the care and maintenance of AQ-2A1 projector is contained in Tech Order 10D-1-2-9-1. Study it. If you do not have a copy of this Tech Order, it can be obtained through authorized publications channels. A good projectionist, through conscientious preventive maintenance, will diagnose major trouble before it happens and take steps to avoid stop-downs during showings.